this all happen by through effective communication so when the human resource management is mainly focus on the team and the stakeholder management actually mainly focus on the people around the project except the team including the team as well but more focus is on the people around all the stakeholders not only just team and this all either you do human resource management or you do stakeholder management both should both should happen in a more by effectively communicating with them so effective communication is very very important the required information should go to the people and we should be able to generate that information we should be able to distribute this information to the required people in timely manner we should be able to get their feedback and should be able to incorporate that in our project and therefore communication is an important chapter and it is such an important chapter that pmi says that project manager most of the time communicate almost 90% of the time right the main purpose here is to generate information that is generate information collect that information distribute this information on a timely basis store it for restore it for retrieving it later time and once it is not used to disposing it it's all about information exchange let us understand a basic model of communication what is a basic model of communication the sender has a thought that it encode and transmit it how it encode like if i i have a thought i encode this in an english language and transmit it to you okay so that is called encoding this encoding can happen in a different environment in different way many times you need not to speak your your body language communicate a lot but that's also an encoding of your thoughts okay it transmitted and the it reaches to receiver the when the receiver receive it it decode it is able to decode only if it understand the language of encoding so if land if under receiver understand the language of encoding it is able to decode and is the communication complete no communication is not complete because sender doesn't know if the receiver has received it or receive it in the form sender want to send or sender has or receiver has received the same thought sender wants to communicate and therefore a feedback is required so receiver receive it and provide a feedback that what he has and what he or she has understood and sender confirms it is this the same thought or it is something different now the knowledge of receiver about the encoding may impact the receiving okay if i am if somebody telling to telling me in a language which i understand no, i don't understand or i understand less then i will either be not be able to decode it or will decode it with a different meaning or decode in bits and pieces i may not get the complete meaning or there is something called noise which comes during this transmission and the receiver receive in a different form than the sender sends it so what is a noise noise is actually which change the meaning of the communication meaning of the communication means sender want to communicate a thought is the same thought receives here so what is what is the noise 
noise here is about not or less knowing the encoding method that is could be a language of communication something else that is changing the meaning maybe uh, like uh, the background information of receiver and sender are different we normally call about culture things right in because a word in different culture the same language but different culture in different place may have different meaning and therefore if the person come from a different background this person come from different background the word may still be same but receiver receive it differently and that we call noise so background information is one of the noise available which distract the or which make it difficult for receiver to receive or change the meaning of the information it is not which stops the communication to go to receiver that is not the noise here that is not the the barriers here noise is also called barriers the barrier here is noise the the communication barriers here are noise the communication barriers are not the barrier which stop the communication they will not stop the communication but they will create a, some kind of disturbance in the communication which will change the meaning of the communication and the person with either difficult to be it difficult to understand or he understand differently that is noise then another thing is feedback feedback is something which receivers provide to sender now if we are sitting in front like we right right now we are not sitting in front we don't see each other we don't see all uh, like one another but if we are sitting together in a classroom and i am talking to you you can shake your head in affirmation or negation right you need not to speak out i can see that have you understood my meaning or not because i get a feedback in the form of body language in the form of you shaking the head but here because i cannot see i cannot get the feedback by you shaking the head so if you are not understanding something if you are not following something what you need to do you need to either need to speak out providing me feedback or you need to write something in the chat box giving me the feedback that i need to repeat something or i you have a question or we can talk about something so without feedback the communication is still be half now before we actually jump to the communication process let's understand some basic stuff about the communication there are various dimension of the communications one is called medium medium means how the communication happens so it can happen in writing it can happen orally right by by word of mouth or by writing into on paper email or something it can be formal it can be informal so what is for informal a dog discussion you pick up the phone and start talking to the other person you meet somewhere and talking about it you do not approach for a very formal way email is normally considered as a informal but email can also be formal now it is the situation has changed so uh, that there is hardly any paper work this may every communication happening through email so email has today both the forms as a formal as well as informal it depends upon how you are communicating how you are sending the email so a memo in a email is a formal a report in an email is a formal an ad hoc discussion an email is a informal okay the most of the communication happen on email is informal but you can also use email for formal communication today but if the exam ask you consider email as an informal way of talking okay it can happen online that is we sit together 
you talk to each other and offline through email so what is the difference between online and offline in the online communication call when you get immediate feedback like we are sitting we don't see each other but still it is an online communication because i can get immediate feedback from you now offline communication is a communication where the feedback is not expected immediately like email you send the email do you expect immediate feedback no the, at what time the person receiver will re, uh, read it and then he will communicate it is all not known okay so voice mail so if you send the voice mail you don't know when the other person is going to read and then respond it right so these are offline communication where the feedback is not immediate online communication is when the feedback is immediate over the phone so over the phone is a interactive is an online communication because the feedback is immediate it could be verbal and non verbal okay we can use voice as we are doing here and non verbal that is the body language uh, just to understand the non verbal non verbal communication is much 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 more stronger than the verbal communication whatever you are telling if your body language doesn't support what you are telling the people will more trust on your body language than what you see okay it could be internal or external within the project outside of project it could be vertical that is your boss and subordinate your supervisor your subordinate or horizontal with your peers okay it could be a active voice it could be passive voice the how you form the structure little less but mediums are very very important the mediums are so important especially verbal and non verbal that you will see that in a normal communication the the participation of verbal communication is only 7% while 93% communication is actually happening through non verbal ways what those non verbal non verbal ways it is could be either your voice or tone or could be body language now in this kind of communication this training like body language is missing so you see that more than 50% of a factor which is contributing more than 50% is missing in this communication it means in an this type of communication you need to be more concentrated you have to use more verbal so i have to be more specific about what i am talking about in what form i am talking about what is my tone and pitch to communicate or to backfill what is missing here in a normal classroom where the body language misses the lot of get things get communicated by your gestures as well and therefore even you do not use words appropriately to the people can understand so in, in our term the verbal communication actually in this case the this percentage becomes significant and this also increase because this part is missing but in a normal communication when you talk to your peers your subordinate your your supervisor etc you consider that the body language is most effective then the tone and pitch you work and then the words so if you what is sarcastical sarcastical means your words are something something but your your tone of telling those words is different and because tone is different the people trust more on tone than the words and they will take the opposite meaning of the word and that is called sarcastic comments right in the communication dimensions we we'll continue with this there are communication skills which are required one is called active listening so listening is a very important communication dimension you know communication doesn't mean only speak and speak in fact it is more listening less speak if you want to be more effective listen more and speak less it becomes more effective communication the people when they speak more and listen less the, the, the communication becomes less effective what is active listening 
एक्टिव लिसनिंग इज कॉल्ड वेन यू आस्क मोर क्वेश्चन वेन यू ट्राई टू प्रो बट द स्पीकर इज से वेन यू आस्क क्वेश्चन और डिस्कस सम मैटर विच इज टॉकिंग अबाउट फैक्ट फाइंडिंग लाइक इन द बिगिनिंग टूडे बिगिनिंग दब आस्क अबाउट दैट ओके विच वन इज गुड द फिक्स पेड और दिस सो दिस इज समथिंग विच इज लाइक समथिंग गेटिंग इन टू इज माइंड दैट टू find to getting when we go through this knowledge he also start thinking of some somewhere around uh, surrounding of it and see that what exactly it mean what is the facts so trying to find the fact behind the practices in uh, which are which are uh, right now in the uh, in the organizations and he seeing that which is more effective so finding some facts motivating people coaching people is another thing which is communication skills negotiating persuading negotiating means give and take and always see that when we say negotiate we should always look for win win okay we should not negotiate in a win lose situation or lead to win lose situation okay and we should look for resolving conflicts so negotiations and resolving conflicts are very very important and this will also take it to the decision making okay decision making is important or is a is a is a, is a complementary to resolving conflicts so if you can resolve the conflict decision making become very easy right and we should understand what are the communication barriers presentation technique it could be verbal it could be non verbal it could be with visual aids it could be the audio audio aids normally questions come how a complex matter can be communicated through voice through visual audio through some body language or what so the answer is very simple whatsoever you think is right or can effectively communicate the message use it there is no ground rule or there is no state or like stand straight forward rule of communicating a complex matter it all depends upon what you are communicating okay so now here it is dimension of coming i think we have already discussed about the vertical vertical and horizontal with ps now this is important question that number of communication channel in a in a project is calculated as n n into n minus 1 divided by 2 why we do this suppose you have four people in your project how many ways they can communicate one how many channels are here two three four five six right correct now if you become 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so by adding one more person the channel do not increase by one or two the increase by 3 now the same question is here 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine or 10 right 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 10 correct this is that so to not to get confused like this we have an equation so use this equation and tell me the answer of this question can you answer this question
great it is it is a such simple questions right the 5 so 5 into 4 divided by 2 is equal to 10 and 7 into 6 divided by 2 is equal to 21 so by adding two team members it added 11 new channels in the project and therefore so it doesn't increase in a, in a like a linear manner it is an exponential manner and therefore it creates lot of communication overhead when you add more people so you must see that how we are, you can do with how many minimum resources you can complete the project more people are there on the project more complexity is there and when it becomes more complex you need to control those communication even a project everybody is talking to everyone you know it is if this become 10 people then it will be only chaos which will be left in the project nothing else so we need to control those things we need to break down some of the channels that this channel will not work these people will not talk to each other they will go through this person they will go through this person like that so communication management is normally implemented through three ways planning communication managing communication and controlling communication it's a very small chapter and normally get finished faster therefore but the whatever we have covered as far these are the important things to cover up so planning execution and controlling so planning a communication management planning a communication management plan is what we are looking for is who needs what information at what time and in what format who needs what information when they need it at what time how it will in what format they will provide it okay and therefore a stakeholder register is an important input here because a stakeholder register tells us what is the information need of the stakeholders that help us who need what information and at what time how it will be provided that could also be maybe part of it but it can be decided that what information to be provided in what form to be provided and then we do a, a require a communication requirement analysis figure it out what technology can be employed depending upon what is available and what is suitable to our project then we create a communication model and disperse the information or find out the method to disperse the information okay and meetings are normally important I don't know meeting I do not consider as tool but you consider if you are going for uh, like exam but I don't consider meeting as a tool okay so communication math figure out the communication model and method based on your requirement analysis and the technology available to disperse the information and this when you put all this thing together it will be called communication management plan so what is the communication technology based on urgency based on availability based on ease of use in the what is suitable for project environment sensitivity with respect to the people's background maintain the con keeping the confidentiality in the mind and the what information to be distributed based on all this we decide on technology okay the sensitivity and confidentiality can also participate in what technology to use and what not to use okay we need to figure it out what model simple model we have already discussed but you can divide decide some other model as well what model is this for your own project how are you going to communicate okay now when we come to which method to select we should 
understand what method should be selected. So there are three methods to talk or to communicate. One is called interactive, another is called push communication, third is called pull communication. Interactive is an online communication. Online means the feedback is immediately available. That means you are f sitting face to face, you are talking over the phone, you are talking, doing a video conferencing, audio conferencing or this kind of training or this kind of virtual tra virtual meetings. Let me add virtual meetings. Or virtual training like we let's add our like so all these are interactive mean com synchronous communication means interactive the feed synchronous means immediate feedback now push and pull communication are the communication where the feedback is not immediate or it may not come all together okay so push communication means the information is pushed you send the information and either you get a feedback later or you may not get the feedback so something are email the mail emails you send the email you don't know you get going to get the answer or not faxes reports i see voicemail also okay all these things are push communication you are sending the information you don't know you may or may not get the response of this only if, if you do not get any response, any feedback, you are not very sure that the person has got the information or not. On the other side, there is a pull communication. The push communication you have sent it. Pull communication is the communication where the communication that the information is available. You can go anytime and push it and pull it. Pull means fetching. So fetch means go and pull go and get it go and get it that is fetch so internet the lot of information is available whenever you need you go to the google search it and fetch the information e learning means the not not this kind of virtual training e learning and virtual trainings are different so this live virtual classroom is is a interactive communication while the e learning contents are the contents available they can be playback and that can be playback at your wish so that is available you go there and learn from there knowledge repository so you may be having a lot of lot knowledge repository repositories you can go and get search it and get the required information from there so it's a pull communication that means the information is always available you go there and fetch it push communication means the information is available with you you send it to other person and you don't know it, when he will receive it or when he will read it okay is this clear so when you create a communication plan it contains what stakeholders requirement with respect to communication stakeholders requirement with respect to communication in what language what format what will be the content what level of details at what frequency the communication will be done who will do the communication who will gather the information who will distribute the information what is the technology going to be used which methodology we going to use will it be a pull communication will it be a push communication will it be an interactive communication in the communication plan if you are doing five or six type of communication in your project for every type of communication you have to write is this a push is this is a pull is this a interactive is this who needs it at what frequency it will be distributed at what frequency we need to meet for this particular thing what is the escalation process escalation process is also part of the communication if the things are not happening we have to reach out how the information flow will happen so you can draw a flow chart glossary of common terms the common terms means some abbreviation some terms which some people may find it difficult so please provide a gross glossary for that glossary for that the method of updating and refining the communication plan and guiding and templates etc okay who needs what information at what time at what interval in what mode and what technology in what form 
दिस इज ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द कम्युनिकेशन मैनेजमेंट प्लान वंस यू हैव दिस कम्युनिकेशन मैनेजमेंट प्लान द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टू मैनेज दिस कम्युनिकेशन एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूट इट सो मैनेज कम्युनिकेशन मीन्स creating this collecting distributing storing and retrieving and disposing it so you have a communication plan based on that you create the project the information collect compile it distribute it store it for later retrieval and once it is expired you dispose it so communication management plan work performance report means the execution data or the execution the what is the performance that is the that is the uh, the perf the performance which going to be distributed you know what happens when you do the cost schedule monitoring etc you forecast and do a cost perform the prepare a work performance report okay that report has to be communicated so those report which you forecast through evm and other things come over here these reports and they go as a project communication you decide on technology decide on model decide on method and information management system where you can keep store the information and retrieve it later and the reporting format in what format it should be reported So effective communication I have many techniques. We have most of them have discussed. What is the model? What is the media? What is the written style? Meeting management, presentation, facilitation, listening barriers, listening activity. So listening is important part. So what kind of activity? Like what we are listening, removing communication barriers. so you decide on communication technology decide on method you decide on a management system based on what type of things are enabled to you okay any tools which on the web at or your maybe if you are doing a paper work then how the paper will be sorted and stored if you are doing the communication electronically how fair it will be stored how it will be fetch in proper permission access to the people to get that data decide on the communication model do a performance reporting so what is performance reporting is that the analysis of past performance that is what is coming out from evm and other controlling processes so past performance forecast the status of the risk and issues this is all may contain a performance report what a performance report contains your past performance your forecast your current status of the risk issues what work is completed what is scheduled for next period summary of all this or any other relevant information right so project communications that means communicating reports providing delivery status holding meeting discussing the status discussing issues resolving them are all project communications the third thing is control communication controlling communication means to ensure that the information need of the project stakeholders are met so seeing that whatever the communication is happening is able to satisfy stakeholders information need if it is not you need to take corrective measures tools and techniques may be similar so you have a communication management plan communication plan management plan the project communication which is output of the previous process and issue log because issue log is a very though issue log is shown as issue as an input in my opinion issue log should be here it's a very important tool but for pmi exam consider it here right okay i'm just for talking about the practical thing issue log is a very important tool to document issues and taking them to the closer and the work performance data 
that is the project communication is one of that what you get is the project performance information what was expected to be communicated and what is exactly get communicated and the difference between them and that difference may lead to some change request project management plan information management systems set of tools to capture store and distribute information that is the that is the a system what is information system from the communication point of view is the is the system where we can store the data and can retrieve it store the information and retrieve it later so system that facilitate collection of information and appropriate access to the same and the output you get project performance information that is what was planned and what was actually done and then raising a change request that how we can improve our communication to satisfy the stakeholders need done it's normally a shorter chapter Do you have any question?